Welcome. This lesson is going to talk about adding and subtracting radicals. So just a reminder that when we're simplifying radicals, we make sure that there are no fractions left under the radicals, which really isn't going to be something we're going to run into in this class. There are no perfect power factors in the radicand. In other words, we don't have any perfect squares under a square root, no perfect cubes under a cube root, and so on. There are no exponents in the radicand that are greater than the index. So for instance, if we had a fourth root of x to the fifth power, that would not be simplified because there's a five that's bigger than the index of four. Okay, so we can simplify those things. And we did that in the last lesson. So now this lesson, we're gonna talk about adding and subtracting radicals. So what we first of all need to understand is that we have what we call like term radicals, and those are terms where they have the same radicand. Now, when we look at something like this, six times the square root of, let's say five, the five is the radicand. The radicand is the expression under the radical. And sometimes you won't be able to combine the radicals the like radicals until you've actually done some simplifying. But in this example that we have right here, so let's take a look at this example. We have two plus the square root of, not two, plus, two times the square root of two. So that's two times the square root of two plus three times the square root of three minus six times the square root of two. And I'm gonna underline that one in red because do you notice that the radicands are both a two? Those are, so those are like term radicals. Now the green, the one that I've underlined with the green, three times the square root of three, this one back here also has the same radicand. It has a three under the radical. So we're gonna be able to combine those. So in practice, we don't usually rewrite them this way, but I'm going to just so you can see, these are alike. Okay, I should have written them in red. I'm sorry, I should have written them in red. I'm gonna write the other ones in green. Maybe I will go back and rewrite these guys in red. So the ones that I underlined in red have the same radicand, so I'll be able to put them together. And the ones that I underlined in green have the same radicand, I'll be able to put them together. So the idea is, just like when we have 2x minus 6x, and we have a plus 3y, and the plus 4y, those are alike and I can put them together. These two I can combine into a negative 4x because 2 take away 6 is negative 4, but it stays as an x. These two I can put together because they are like enough. 3 plus 4 is 7, so I have 7y. So my final answer here, or when I simplified, I'd have negative 4x plus 7y. Well, we're going to do the same thing with these guys, okay? So what we have is we have 2 square root of 2 minus 6 square root of 2. We can combine that into negative 4 square roots 2. And we can combine the other two, 3 plus 4 is 7, into 7 square roots of 3. So that our original simplifies to this. Now we cannot combine this one and that one, the negative four square roots of two and the seven square root of three, I can't combine those because the radicands are different. One has a two, one has a three. So we can only combine when they have the same radicand. So we're gonna dive into some examples and we're gonna do several. So I'm gonna look at example one here. My directions are simplify the expressions below by adding or subtracting. Now some of them I'm going to have to actually do some simplifying along the way as well. Um, so I underline that 49. I'm going to do some simplifying because 49 is 7 times 7. I'm going to do some simplifying here because in that 8 I have a 4 that will come out. So we simplify and combine some like radicals. So let's see what we have on this one. 2 is a prime. 5 is a prime, 2 is a prime, 5 is a prime. Oh, look, I have radicands that are the same. So I'm going to combine these two. 
Let me underline them in blue. Those two will go together. 2 plus 3. Notice it's a positive 2 and it's a positive 3. Positive 3. So that goes together as positive 5 times the square root of 2. And then these two, all right, I should do some highlighting. Maybe we'll do some highlighting on the next one. Those two both have a square root of 5. So I've got a negative 4 and a positive 3. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So I have negative 1 times the square root of 5. And you can write it with the negative 1 or if you want, or more commonly, we don't write the 1 and we just write 5 times the square root of 2 minus the square root of 5. You can put the 1 in or leave it out, either way. Okay, let's do the next one. So example 2, we're going to look at that 49 as being 7 times 7. So square root of 49 is 7. So that's 2 times 7, which is 14. On the next one, that 27... I'm going to break it down. It's divisible by 3. 27 divided by 3 is 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. But notice this is a cube root. So I have 3 times 3 times 3. And that turns into a 3. Cube root of 3 to the third power is 3. Remember, cube roots undo cubes. So the cube root of 27 is 3. And the last one that I have to deal with is the cube root of 64. So I'm going to take the 64 and I'm going to break it down. 2 and 32. 32 is 2 times 16. 16 is 2 times 8. 8 is 2 times 4. And finally, 4 is 2 times 2. I got a lot of 2s. I need three at a time because I'm dealing with a cube root, right? It's a cube root, so I need three of a kind. So I'm going to have a two coming out. I'm going to have another two coming out. So what I have is three, that's the three that was right there, times two times another two. And then we're going to clean this all up. Four take away three. I could turn that into an 11 if I want to. Or you can leave it like this for a minute if you want. But three times, I have to multiply first before I add, right? 3 times 2 is 6 times another 2 is 12. Putting it all together, I have 11 plus 12, which is 23. Okay, that's example 2. Let's go ahead and look at example 3. So on example 3, we have the square root of 8. Let me extend that page. We have the square root of 8. And I need to look at that 8 as being 2 times 2 times 2. So if you want, you can go down to the bottom or somewhere on your paper. 8 is 2 times 4. 4 is 2 times 2. All right, I'll just break it down. So that 8 is going to be a 2 coming out. So it's 2 square root of 2. That's the first one. The 27, we've seen that one already. Let's go back over and look at our 27. 27 was three threes. So that 27, I have a three coming out and a three staying under. And the 12, two times six, and then six is two times three. And as a product of primes, 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. So I have a 2 coming out, multiplying with the 3 that was already there. And I have a 3 staying underneath the radical. So that square root of 12 is 2 times the square root of 3. Let me just clean that up a little bit. And the square root of 2 doesn't simplify because 2 is prime. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of work here. I have 2 square root of 2 plus 12 square root of 3 minus 6 square root of 3 plus the square root of 2. Now let's identify our like radicals. So 2 radical 2 and 1 radical 2. I add those together, I get 2 plus 1 is 3. I get 3 radical 2. And then the next ones, 12 radical 3 minus 6 radical 3. 12 take away 6 is 6, but it's positive 6. So I have positive 6 times the square root of 3, and we're done. Since 
they have different radicands. One is a 2, one's a 3. I can't put those two radical terms together. All right, we're going to quickly go through number 4. We have a lot of these already done. The radical 8, we saw last time that that was 2 radical 2. So I'm just going to do that again. The square root of 27 was 3 radical 3. I'm going to use that again. The 18, I want to break that 18 down as, well, let's just do it off to the side here. So the 18, I'm going to go just a little bit lower here, 18. I can divide it by 2 because it's even. 18 is 2 times 9. 9 is 3 times 3. I have a pair of 3s. So I have a 3 coming out, so I have 6 times 3, which is going to turn into an 18 in a second. And under the radical, I still have a 2. And then my plus 7 radical 3. Radical 3 does not simplify. Okay, I'm going to do another step here. That's 4 radical 2 minus 3 radical 3 plus 18 radical 2 plus 7 radical 3. And then I'm going to underline the ones that are alike. So I have a 4 radical 2 plus an 18 radical 2. That's going to equal 22. 4 plus 18 is 22. 22 times the square root of 2. And then plus, wait, make, make sure it is plus. It's negative 3 radical 3 plus 7 radical 3. Negative 3 plus 7 is 4. It is positive, so plus 4 radical 3. And we are done. Okay, let's flip to the next page where we have example five. Now I want you to look very carefully. I have lots of twos for my radicands, but here's the problem. This one's an index of three. Cube root of two and the square root of two are not the same number. They are not the same. You can test it out on the calculator, but they are not the same number. The indexes have to be the same to put them together. And this is index 3. So I cannot put that together with a square root. Okay? Cube root of 2 and square root of 2 are not the same. So this one I will have to leave separate from the other two. It's 2 times the cube root of 2. And then these two have the same radicand and this, the index is there too. They're both the same index. So I can put 3 take away 10 is negative 7, so I have negative 7 radical 2, and we're done. The important thing to remember about this one is cube root and square root are not the same, so I can't put them together. Next example, example 6. So I'm not exactly sure how your teachers taught you to do square roots of negatives, but what I tell my students is when you have a square root of a negative, it's not a real number, it's imaginary. So we always start by pulling the i the negative out as an i. Square root of a negative number is imaginary, so we bring the negative out as an i. And we have i times the square root of 4. Now notice the second one doesn't have a negative, but I'm going to look at that 25 and notice it's 5 times 5. Okay, so I can change that square root of 25 into a 5 right now, because 25 is 5 times 5, right? 5, 5, 25 is 5 times 5. Got a pair of 5s. Square root of 25 is 5. Next one, notice there's a negative. So the negative is going to come out as an i. And I have 2 times i times the square root of 81. Now let's do some more cleanup. What's the square root of 4? It's 2. We've already simplified the square root of 25 to a 5. What's the square root of 81? It's 9. So here I have a 9. So I have 2i times 9. Well, 9 times 2 is 18, so I'm going to put those together, or multiply that together. 2 times 9 is 18, so I have 18i. Finally, we're going to write this in a very specific order. We usually like to have the number that doesn't involve i first. So I'm going to put that one first, the 5. And then I'm going to notice that these two are alike. They both involve an i. 2 plus 18 is 20, so I'm going to have 5 plus 20i, and that is my final answer, 5 plus 20i. I'm thinking most of the 
questions, we'll accept the order 20i plus 5, but standard form for a complex number, a non-real number, is to put the i term last. So we'll do it that way. Okay, example 7. Let's take a look. Example 7. Here we are. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to take the negative and we're going to pull it out as an i. Oh, well, I could combine these two first if I wanted because they have the same radicand. I think I'm going to go ahead and just to get in the habit of taking the negative out as an i. Because when we get to multiplying, we need to do that first. So we'll just get in the habit of taking the negative out as an i first. So negative comes out as an i. Negative 6i times the square root of 6. Minus 2 times the square root of 5. Negative comes out as an i. Multiplies with what's already there. 9i times the square root of 6. And now, I'm going to put together these two because they both involve i times the square root of 6. I think to be consistent, we'll put the negative 2 square roots of 5 in the front. And then negative 6 plus 9 is positive 3, so we'll have 3i times the square root of 6. And we are finished. Okay, last one. Example 8. Oh, we've seen that 18 before. What is 18? It's 2 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3. Here's a pair of 3s. So I have a 3 coming out, multiplying with a 3 that's already there. Okay, 3 times 3 is 9, so I have 9 times the square root of 2. 2 stays underneath. Plus... We're going to make this a 6i square root of 3. We can bring the negative out as an i. Bring the negative out as an i. So I have 18i square root of 3. And now I can combine them. So I have 9 square root of 2. 6 plus 18 is 24. Yes? So we have 24i times the square root of... Wait, what did I just do? Yes, we did. Uh, that was a minus, though. That's the problem. Okay, look at what I have. I need to look at my signs more carefully. So that's a positive 6. This is a negative 18. See how it was negative here? It's still a negative. Apologies. We bring a negative out as an i, but that's still a negative right there. Okay, so let's rewind. We simplified 3 square roots of 18 into 9 square roots of 2. That is correct. We bring the negative out as an i from this second term. So we have 6i times the square root of 3. We bring in the negative out as an i on the last one. Now one more time. Positive 6 and negative 18 make negative 12i square root of 3. And we are finished. That is the end of our notes.